delayed, useless, buggy, unimpressive. These are all words you may have heard associated with Apple intelligence, but ignore all the hate. Apple intelligence actually can make your life easier and save you time. At least some of it can. Now, is it perfect? Definitely not. But if you have a device that has Apple intelligence already, you might as well take advantage of what it can do for you. So here are five real life ways that I use Apple intelligence every day. But first, what even is Apple intelligence? Well, it's Apple's version of an AI system, of an artificial intelligence system, but they have quite cleverly coined it Apple intelligence to keep the same letters, AI. And so to actually use Apple intelligence, you must first have a device that is compatible with Apple intelligence. And this is a list of all the devices that currently support it. You must also then be in a region that supports Apple intelligence. This is the current list, but they do keep adding more. Your device must also have the latest software downloaded. And lastly, you have to turn it on. So if you head on into your settings, you'll now see an option for Apple Intelligence and Siri. That's where you can toggle on Apple Intelligence. The other thing I recommend doing while you're here is going down to Extensions and Chat GPT. This is completely free and you don't have to have a Chat GPT to use this. Completely optional, you can choose to opt in. I do recommend enabling use Chat GPT because if ever Apple intelligence cannot do something itself, it will automatically use ChatGPT instead. And a bunch of the examples I'm going to show do leverage this ChatGPT integration because it just makes Apple intelligence a lot smarter. So the first Apple intelligence feature that I find incredibly helpful and that I use multiple times a day is the new summary feature and specifically in email and Safari. If I head in over to my email, you'll see I subscribe to quite a few newsletters and I almost never have time to read them all. So before Apple intelligence, I would just kind of read a couple and ignore the rest. But now what I can do is if I go into a newsletter or any email, at the top, you'll see a summarize button. So now I click on that and give it a second, and then it'll give me a summary of the newsletter. And it's not always perfect, but I do find it good enough to give me an idea of what this newsletter is about. Safari is another great place. I always like to use the summary feature, especially when I'm doing research and I wanna quickly skim articles. So at the very top to the left of the URL, you'll see a button, click on that, and then click show reader. This will open the article in a reader view and at the top you'll see a summarize button. So again, once you click on that, it'll give you a brief summary of the article. And if you want to know more about this reader mode and general Safari tips and tricks, make sure you're subscribed because I have a video coming up that you won't want to miss. The Apple intelligence writing tools are also incredibly useful. The compose feature I often use in Apple notes. And so if you open a new note and then hit this button at the top, It'll open your writing tools menu and at the bottom go to compose. And then this is part of that chat GPT integration we turned on in settings at the beginning. But so you can describe what you are looking to write to chat GPT and it will do it for you. So if I click in and I ask it to show me all of the features of Apple intelligence and then it'll do just that. And I still recommend checking for accuracy. But if I'm brainstorming or even procrastinating and just want to get the ball rolling, I do find this incredibly helpful. And then the proofread and rewrite features I use most often in my email. So once I write the email, I would just select all the text and then hit writing tools from the menu that pops up and hit proofread. And at the bottom, it'll show me it made three changes. I could go through one by one if I wanted to revert to the original, but they are spelling mistakes, so I'll hit done. But maybe proofreading this email wasn't enough. Maybe I'm still overthinking this, rereading it, and think it sounds a little bit too harsh. I can highlight all of the text again, hit the writing tools, and this time hit friendly. Sometimes I'll get this warning, but I can still hit continue, and it'll work and make my message sound a little bit nicer before sending it off to Tim Cook. The Photos app also got some really useful Apple intelligence features. So the first one is a cleanup tool. So this is a photo of a very delicious looking and delicious tasting dessert, but this glass of water in the background just kind of ruins it for me. 
So if I head down to this menu, you'll now see a cleanup button. If I click on that, it'll take a second and then it'll highlight anything obvious that it thinks I might want to remove from the photo. So I can just tap on that to remove them. But if it does miss something, you can circle it or just kind of draw on it like that to remove it as well. The search feature in the Photos app also got a lot smarter. So now maybe I want to search for golf photos, but Specifically, when I'm swinging, I can search golf swing and then it'll pull up all the photos where it thinks there's a swing movement or swing action. It might not be 100% correct, but it's still really good. Or if I'm looking for photos where I'm golfing by the ocean, I can search for that and then it'll find all of those photos. And again, it's not perfect, but it still does a decent job. And then if you have any of the iPhone 16s, you can also use visual intelligence with the camera control button. So I would just long press the camera control button on the right until visual intelligence pops up and then line up something I'm looking for or looking at and hit the search button on the right and then it'll search Google for similar items. So if I'm shopping and looking for something specific, this is a great way to find it. But you can also use it for recipe ideas if you point it at ingredients in your fridge or even to translate signs when you're traveling. Now, I think it'd be a pretty unanimous opinion to say that Siri is the biggest letdown of Apple intelligence because most of the promised Siri improvements have still not been released till this day. And let's be honest, it wasn't the best voice assistant to begin with, but there are still a few updates to Siri that I think are worth mentioning. The first minor update is that Siri got a new look. So now when I say, you'll see this colorful glow around the outside of your device. And finally, this one is a long time coming. You can now tap to type to Siri. So now when you're somewhere quiet and you can't speak to your phone, you can just tap on the bottom of your device to type a message to Siri. But the best and most helpful update to Siri is the integration with ChatGPT. And so this is another example of why I recommend enabling ChatGPT in settings like I showed earlier on, because now if you ask a question and Siri can't answer it, ChatGPT will instead. So if I wanted to ask something a little bit more complex, like what should I pack for a trip to Portugal in October? It'll ask me if I want to use ChatGPT and then give me the answer. The little caveat here is that I wish any time Siri didn't know the answer, it would automatically go to ChatGPT. What's the weather in Portugal in October? This is an example. I wish it would just automatically go to ChatGPT. So the way to get around that is to ask this way. Using ChatGPT, what is the weather in Portugal in October? So that's a little annoyance. I wish it would just do that automatically, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. The biggest tip though I have to speed that integration up, if you go back into settings and Apple intelligence and Siri, back into that chat GPT extension, at the bottom, I turn off confirm chat GPT requests. That way, instead of asking me every time if I want it to use chat GPT for those more complex questions, it'll just do it immediately every time. This is a minor thing, but it's actually very useful is you can now use Siri as basically Apple support for your device. So if ever you need instructions on how to do something on your Apple device, you can just ask Siri how do I change the wallpaper on my iPad? Or even, how do I add an email account to my iPad? Honestly, pretty useful instead of having to search on Google. The next Apple intelligence feature I use every day are the smarter notifications and related focus mode. So I'll get to that in a second. So now if you have multiple notifications from the same app, Apple intelligence will summarize all of them into a couple lines. And the summaries can be a little hit or miss, especially when Apple intelligence misses some context, they can be pretty funny or even 
very unfortunate misses. Google Apple intelligence summary fails if you want to see a few examples. But my hot take is that they are more useful than not about 85% of the time. The other thing is that Apple intelligence will now try and prioritize notifications or rank your notifications by importance so that you don't miss like a delivery or a message about a dinner happening today. Any of those important notifications will be bumped to the top of your notification list. And what's related to that is you can now use Apple intelligence with focus modes. So if you head back into settings and over to focus this time, you'll see a new focus mode called reduce interruptions. And so this new focus mode will silence all notifications except those notifications it thinks are priority and really important will come through. You can also go in though and add that functionality to any of your existing focus modes here at the top. You could toggle that on, but I personally use it and find it most helpful as its own dedicated focus mode when I want to focus but not be completely on do not disturb. If you found today's video useful, let me know by leaving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. And that's it, so have a great day. Bye.